down here in the pit area again for another Jay Concepts pit report with Australian team manager Trent Aquilina qualifying into the semis here for the fifth scale division. He's going to show us around his car here. And the first thing we notice on here, well, of course, these bodies are a heck of a lot bigger than anything that we see on any other class of car. Uh, but this is actually a body that you were very involved with in terms of the design of the shape of it. Yes, it's the uh, it's the VE Holden VE Commodore. It's the first time that uh, the VE Commodore has been run at an IFMAR event. Uh, it's taken a lot of blood, sweat and tears to get this uh, body shell here. And uh, we've worked in collaboration with Frank Killam uh, in California and General Motors Holden in Australia to, uh, to basically get this body shell here. And the Holden V Commodore for the Americans is what we know as the Chevrolet SS. Uh, so if the shape of this vehicle looks a little bit similar, uh, that's the whole reason behind it. How important is the body shape in fifth scale racing? Body shape is uh, very important, for, especially for aerodynamics. Um, and it will also, de depending, depending on the nose of the car as well, um, some body shapes will give you better steering, some body shapes will give you less steering, uh, some body shapes will actually uh, make the car a little bit twitchier uh, down the straight and a little bit, you know, some, some body shapes are, yeah, more, more stable than others. But, um, uh, but the, the VE gives, has, has the, gives you the quality of, of steering and stability as well. And the bodies themselves are made out of Lexan, just like in the smaller car class of cars, but I understand that you can get the bodies in different thicknesses that are different weight, and that changes the car's handling as well. It certainly does. This, uh, this particular body shell is a one millimeter body shell, so it, it, effectively, pulls, it effectively pulls probably about 130 to 150 grams off the actual weight of the car. So that's, that's all, um, that's, that's weight that's up high. So we, if, and keeps, you know, we can actually keep the weight much, much lower down, you know, down to the car. So better center of gravity, um, and you know, the car, car will actually perform much better on the track. What would be the advantage then to running a heavier body shell? Uh, heavier body shell, we'd probably run a heavier body shell if it was raining, or um, say possibly in in slipperier conditions, um, just to try and get a little bit more weight on the car so we can get more uh, more traction um, on on the surface you keep talking about weight the cars are the minimum weight is 10 kilograms so for those who use the standard system these cars weigh 22 pounds yes they they do weight is very important um, 10 kilos is our minimum weight uh, or 22 pounds is our minimum weight um, we try to engineer the cars to be close to that you know sort of say 10.5 10.1, 10.2. We we don't want the car to be too light because if if we get a if we get a tap in the rear of the car going around a corner, um, it, it it can make the car really unsettle the car, and you know it will affect your times. So obviously by you know, um, you know by coming off the track, but something that a little bit more heavier, um, yeah, just just gives you also a little bit more stability as well. And of course, like any other class of racing, uh, the tires play a huge role in fifth scale. And so we've got three different manufacturers down here represented. And can you tell us a little bit the difference of the three different brands that we have down here, starting on uh, the left side. Okay, um, we've got here. We've got the SP tire. Uh, that's the SP tire is, is effectively new to the uh, the one fifth scale racing. Um, it's the, the tire. The performance of the tire is very good, um, but but for this event, just with the way the traction is, it's it, it's just not all not not what we need at the moment. Um, the next tire here is the uh, GRP tire, and that was a tire that we were using early in the event uh, because when we came here for the warm up last year, we actually. We, we found that was the best performing tyre, it was very consistent, we had really good lap times. Uh, so we thought we'll, we'll start with that tyre when we come to Australia, uh, when we come to Malaysia for this year. But it started off well, and, but it, the, the tyre sort of fell off the edge for us. So we then moved to the PMT tyre, 
but we we found we found the performance of the PMT tyre very consistent, and it's been getting better as the competition's been um, progressing, and the you know the bet and more grip being laid down or more rubber being laid down on the track. We see that all three different manufacturers have a different tread pattern, but also I'm sure the compound is very important as well. Very much so. The, um, the basically the the compound that the SP tire comes in a in a super soft, a soft, and a medium. Um, that the SP SP tire that you see there is a so, uh, is a soft tire. Uh, the uh, GRP tire, that particular tire, they, they've they've got two different types of compound. They've got an S compound and a P compound. S compound is better for dirtier tracks. P compound tire is better for cleaner tracks with uh, better traction. Um, and they they make them in a super soft, soft, and a medium. Uh, the PMT tire. They do very much similar. They'll make a H tire for um, for for basically dirtier tracks um, that uh, that that are like um, you know sort of have a bit of nitro out there, bit more bit more rubber. Uh, the P tire, the I shouldn't say the P tire, the uh, the X tire is for much higher much higher grip tracks. So and that that also comes in a. Uh, like an X3, which is a super soft, an X5, um, and and you know a few uh, you know a few different compounds. But essentially here, we're using we're actually using a combination of both the H tire on the front of the car and the X tire on the back of the car. So normally we don't mix no normally don't mix those combinations together, but here in you know Kuala Lumpur it's 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 working for us. It has been difficult track conditions for both the GT and Fiscale division, so we're going to go ahead and pull off this uh, beautiful Holton Commodore body. And down here we see uh, you're running the RS5, which they call themselves the carbon car, because most of the Fiscale cars competing this weekend have a very nice uh, machine chassis, but this is machined out of carbon fiber. Yes, this uh, the RS5 car, all carbon fiber. Um, it's a full monocoque design um, chassis, so effectively, uh, with the with the uh, creates a, a nice rigid tube, and that that's that's one of the benefits of the RS5, is the stiffness and the rigidity of its chassis, um, and it, it it actually allows the dampers to do the work, so um, and uh, but one of the beauties with the RS5 is if you do need a little bit of flex in your chassis they give you the, uh, they give you that option to um, to actually increase flex around the uh, around the, the top plate and you can vary that flex just with the adjustment of of these upper screws um, to various different degrees and you can even remove um, some of the plates to give you much more flex uh, the same with the uh, any you know, the the, uh, the roll bar down the rear. Um, there's just so much adjustment on these cars that uh, you know it's 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 incredible. Speaking of adjustment, we're looking at these big shocks on the rear here. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, how important damping is, how you change the valving adjustments on it. The the dampers probably one of the one of the most important parts of the car. Uh, just to just to give you that feel, um, that better feel on the track, better better dampening. These particular dampers that are on the, on the on our RS5 T15 uh, are a Mechatec damper, uh, and they have we can actually adjust the compression and the rebound. They're, uh, they've they've actually got valving in the damper, so we've got 12 clicks of adjustment on compression, 12 clicks on on rebound, so we can actually uh, we, we can control what we need. So I, I can go out for a run, and if if say for example we're just getting a little bit too much bite coming through a corner, come in one click on the adjustment and go back out there, and it's a totally different car. The we see the rear differential is exposed here in the rear axle, and I imagine you can change the differential as well. Yes, with with the differential, the differential that we're running in this in this um, in the car is a uh, Bergenzoni differential, 
uh, great for low traction tracks, um, and you can you can change change the you can actually change the gearing in the differential, and by just by removing removing or adding uh, planetary gears, and uh, by varying the different oil or greases that you use to to give you. Um, you know, just to give you the the, uh, the drive that you need, or the traction, you know, the, the drive that you need from the dip. The uh, this is uh, Bergen's only do make a couple of different variants. Uh, the guys uh, that are driving the Harms are using an adjustable Bergen's only diff, so you can actually make adjustments from the outside. Whereas with with our diff, uh, with our Bergen's only diff, essentially it's a you know we we set it and we we don't worry about it. It's um, it's it's it, it's a really really good differential. Outside of, of course, the chassis stiffeners, uh, the dampers, the differential. What are some of the more uh, important adjustments you can make to the car? Okay, one of uh, very one of the most important adjustments on the car, especially going out if you're going out on a morning run or an afternoon run, where the track temperature is a little bit cooler. You'll be adjusting. Your, you'll adjust your rear toe just to give you better drive um, in those, and and better drive, but also get temperature in the rear of the tyre. Any roll bar on the rear, very important, especially in um, getting getting that traction down. Uh, we can we can slide we can slide the bar in uh, to slide the bar in to make the bar stiffer. Or as you can see here, I'm running a super soft rear bar. Uh, we can also change gearing. The gearing that can, we can change the, the gear ratio. The gear ratio, um, you know, if we want the, if we want the car to, like, uh, to provide, you know, have better torque out of the hull, uh, we can go, you know, we can, we can change the gearing or if we want the engine to rev a little bit more, change the gearing to suit and then we can also get better engine performance better fuel economy uh, so it all that all sort of all, all ties in uh, same with the clutch the clutch is fully adjustable has um, you can change the springs you can change the um, also the uh, change the springs the, the diameter of the spring you can change the shoe the material of the shoe from carbon to aluminium um, and so it'll give you a different engagement like we use, we use the uh, Melky uh, gear shift clutch, and and we found that that has unbelievable performance and stays consistent throughout. You know, for a half, you know, for a good half hour. Um, pipes, pipes. The exhaust pipe is also very important on a two-stroke. A good tuned pipe will give you, you know, really good, you know, good performance, good fuel economy, and. You can, you know, you can have pipes that will make your car give you better bottom end torque, or good, you know, uh, allow the engine to, to rev rev more, give you, you know, a little bit more, you know, rev. Moving to the front of the car, again, you can adjust your your, your toe um, is you know, is is that that's also a big thing for stability um, droop. The front damper and the, 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 there's also front dampers and the um, and the front any uh, the, the front any roll bar, uh, but on our car we we don't touch that too much. We we more sort of look at tow and camber um, to to give us you know whether we want the car to give us a little bit more push um, through a corner a bit more you know or a little you know a little bit more oversteer. Uh, yeah, and also with the brakes on these, they're a hydraulic disc brake as well. So, uh, and brake balance is very important on these cars coming, you know, coming through a corner. The last thing you want is your rear brake to come up before your uh, before your front brake, or else you'll start doing snap over steer, um, you know, coming through corners. The engine, I understand uh, everyone runs a Genoa, or I'm sorry, Genoa G230 uh, RC engine, uh, but there are many, many, many different uh, companies that tune the motors along with, uh, you know, com combining them with a the pipe, 
changing the port timing, changing a lot of the things on the inside of the engine to create d uh, more power or different kinds of power. For sure. They, these, they, there's, there are that many engine tuners out, out there in large scale, but it, it all comes down to in, in a half hour, in, in your half hour run, you're limited to 700 cc's of fuel and you can have, but you, you can have as much power as you want, but you, you're limited to that 700 cc's of fuel. So, so th there is that fine line of, you know, do I, you know, does, do I have an engine that makes, you know, really, really good power that uses fuel or, you know, do I have an engine that is going to ensure that you know, that gives me the right balance of power to, to fuel economy as well. Plus also with the, uh, you want a reliable engine too. You know, there's, uh, you, can, you can really go to town on these motors and, you know, make some, you know, some fantastic power. But reliability is everything, um, especially in a half hour run. You touched on one of the uh, rules for fifth scale racing that's a little bit different than the other classes that uh, a lot of RC racers are familiar with. You start the race with, I believe, it's 700 cc's of fuel only, and that's really probably more of a cost-saving measure that if you are limited on fuel economy, you're not going to go crazy on the engine. That's it. The, um, you know, there's, uh, that is, that's probably the one single biggest limiter for us. And it, it it puts, um, yeah, it, it's it's a good uh, leveler if you'd like to say for the for the class. Um, you know, some you know, some some engines, you know, some of the engines out there that we race against, you know, they they've all got their, their sort of their, their pros and cons, but um, everything sort of tends to balance out, you know, in the uh, in the in the long run. You know, some guys some guys that we race with in Australia. Um, or overseas, uh, sometimes their engines don't make time, and one of the, one of the big one of the big factors is you know temperature, humidity, uh, and things like that. So you you really got to be you know on the ball as to knowing what your engine is doing. Like for example, through through qualifying, um, you know we we're crunching numbers just to make sure that we you know we do fuel runs or or run uh, a 400 mil load in the car. And we, we look at you know our fuel consumption, crunch the numbers, and then that'll give us that'll that'll actually give us our run time on a full load. So so we, we look at all we look at all of that, um, and and for events like this, you need to look at it. And some of the other rules that are a little bit different, I believe, if you flame out during the race, uh, you only have a limited amount of times that you can try to restart the engine. Yes. Well, if if the engine flames out. Um, say, for example, up the back corner of of the track, um, you know, the marshal um, he can he can try to start the car three times. Uh, other than that, the car's then got to be returned to the pits. So then you can then your mechanic can then work on the car, try to get you running again, and get you back on the track. And also, uh, you're going to have to complete a pit stop in the longer final tomorrow, uh, but the pit stops work a little bit differently as well. Yes, they, they, they work unlike they work unlike a, a V8 supercar pit stop or an F1 pit stop. Uh, basically, in the first half an hour, um, we'll be able to come in at say 30 minutes, uh, and then it's a 90 second stop. So in that 90 second stop, we're allowed to uh, re, you know, uh, refuel. Um, we can change the battery, but we can't change the tyres. If we go, if, if we do want to change tyres, we need to go back out in a, uh, after the 90 sec after the 90 seconds um, has uh, elapsed. We can then go back out, come back in, and then then change our tyre. And and that that's going to be a big thing through the one hour final, is is you know tyre degradation. You know will you know will the choice of tyre that you that you start with, will you be able to finish with that? And and we do know that there are guys out there that are uh, concerned whether their tyres are going to last the uh, the one hour. Well, it's going to be an incredible day of racing tomorrow. A totally different format of RC racing that many of the fans on Live RC from all over the world have ever seen before. And we look to 
I look forward to watching you and some of your Australian mates battle for a world championship. Thank you so much. Thanks, Aaron. Cheers, Mike. That's Trent Aquilina. The Australian team manager just gave us a run through of his carbon car RS5, and we look forward to watching him compete tomorrow for a world championship.